This is Real Turkey Channel and I'm Attila Eşilada. Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, um, Seasons Greetings, uh, whichever religion or tradition you belong to. It's a festive season and I wish all of you happiness, health and prosperity in 2021. Unfortunately, none of these things will come true for Turkey. <laughs> yeah. It's that time of the year where we sing Yuletides, uh, drink uh, eggnog, uh, and make predictions for the next year. Of course, not only humble Attila Yeshilara, but even the giants of the investment banking community and the, <laughs> the world, I am sorry. Uh, it's just a little fire. I I am I I like to start small fires for fun. Um, not only Atilla Shilada, but uh, the giants of the economy and investment banking community publish their New Year predictions. Usually by January 15, January 20, all of these predictions are relegated to the scrap bin, and we start over. That's not because we humans are stupid. It's because the world is too chaotic. We live in a quantum world where anything can happen and whatever happens affects everyone, everything else. We do economics, but we have to control for sudden changes in, you know, political conditions, earthquakes, other natural disasters, black swans like COVID-19 wars, uh, etc., etc. This is why uh, it's really not a surprise to me that none of my predictions will come true. These are uh, in the nature of uh, sort of a roadmap, you know, a thinking process to show where I'm going with the next year, what I think about Turkey. And then you can, if you like the process, if you like the blueprint, you can take uh, that and use your own assumptions to reach different conclusions. It's the logic in reaching conclusions that count. Okay, Turkey 2021. It's going to be a miserable year. We're going to have very low growth, very high inflation, and potentially political instability. But let's start with the good news. Current account deficits, one of Turkey's chronic problems. Uh, Anytime Turkey grows, we produce huge current account deficits. That's because uh, we really have low technology production base and our labor force is not skilled. There are, of course, other reasons as well. For instance, that we import a lot of energy. But uh, this year, in 2021, we will not have a current account deficit problem. Uh, me and uh, my teammates, who shall remain nameless because they don't want to be associated with the scrap product, predict that current account deficit to GDP ratio will not exceed 1%, simply because Turkey will not grow, which is the next thing I'm going to talk about. Therefore, uh, it's almost impossible to have a balance of payments crisis or a currency shock. That doesn't mean... Turkish lira will gain value against the dollar or euro or other major currencies. Since we have double-digit inflation, for Turkey to remain competitive and not to be inundated by imports, Turkish lira must depreciate to retain the competitive status quo. So Turkish lira will depreciate more or, more or less in tandem with the dollar. So Depending on what your view on the dollar index is, Turkish lira will depreciate against the dollar anywhere between 10 to 15 percent. But uh, uh, Turkey will only have a balance of payments problem if Joe Biden and EU collaborate to put the squeeze on Turkey. That is, if they decide on new Katsa or EU sanctions, which would spill over from the area of symbolics to either trade or financial institutions. Why would 
Joe Biden or EU do that? Oh, there are just a host of reasons. Just watch the videos. For Americans, they don't want Russian-made S-400s on our soil. Europeans are rather angry about our efforts to build a spy network in EU and Turkey's constant and steady deviation from uh, universal human rights and, and law and order rules. Anyhow, both have sufficient reasons in their view, this is not my view, this is not Turkish view, in their view, to try to change Turkey's attitude and policies. And if Turkey doesn't cooperate, if a compromise can't be reached, uh, at the end of the first quarter, sometime in the second quarter, we could experience a currency shock. And of course, Turkish lira could depreciate by 20-30% overnight, as it happened in August 2018. At Wikipedia, look at Pastor Bronson crises. But otherwise, Turkey has enough effects uh, reserves and the banks have uh, their own effects holdings abroad in their correspondence or international banks so that we would have no problems financing our meager current account deficit. That's the good news. The bad news is despite uh, the recent rate hikes, Turkish inflation is going to remain high and sticky. By high, I mean probably averaging 15-16% over the year to close the year at 16 or 17%. That's CPI, Consumer Price Index. Why? Well, first of all, the current interest rates, 17%, are not enough to moderate an inflation that's rising at an annual pace of 14%. By spring, CPI will rise to 15-16%. When you have high double digit, I'm sorry, low double digit inflation, you need two things to fight it back. First, you need credibility, which our new central bank governor Naji Akbal is slowly building up. But secondly, you need very high interest rates and a recession. There is simply no way to squeeze inflation out of a country unless you trigger a recession. For instance, if the going rate or trend rate of inflation is 15%, Naji Akbal, central bank governor, will have to raise policy rates to 20% or above and promise to keep them there for at least a year to bring inflation down first to 10%, then to 5% which is simply not feasible. There is no consensus uh, among the Turkish public, much, much less among politicians, that uh, Turkey needs uh, such a high interest rate to defeat inflation if the cost is a deep recession. Secondly, there is stickiness. In other words, uh, low double-digit inflation has been around for so long that people automatically expect it to continue. And the government helps this kind of uh, perception by indexing waging, wages, salaries, and prices to past year's inflation. So each new year, we don't start with zero inflation, but with the burden of past year's inflation, which have been only reflected to new salaries and state-controlled prices. Uh, and finally, of course, currency instability. I mean, as I've said, even though I don't expect a currency shock, Turkish lira must depreciate somewhere around the rate of inflation. Otherwise, our exports would go down. But that's a second-order effect as far as I'm concerned. But more importantly, our imports would explode because imports would be much cheaper vis-a-vis -vis their Turkish substitutes. And to prevent that, it's called a competitiveness issue. Turkish lira must depreciate more or less in line with other emerging markets' currencies vis-a-vis -vis dollar and euro. So, inflation is going to stay with us for another year. Growth? I, you know, at my age, I don't have too many hobbies. I read everything that's published about Turkey by international investment banks. 
asset management companies, financial press, and there is general optimism about Turkish growth, you know, 4%, 5% real GDP growth, which just doesn't make any sense to me. First of all, as IMF has determined, Turkey's growth potential has declined to 3%. Anything above that creates more current account deficit and more inflation. B, we have bad management, bad bad pol- political management. Let's face it. I mean, Mr. Erdogan does a very poor job of managing this country. He refuses to accept reforms, not only in human rights and in terms of reinstituting democratic standards, but also in judiciary and economic area as well. Turkey is an extremely non-transparent country where only Mr. Erdogan makes the rules and everyone has to obey. This kind of personalized uh, uh, administrative style just doesn't work uh, in in large countries. Uh, it doesn't work in Russia. Russia is always in a stagnation, and we will see it will not work in China. So, you know, policy error is one of the reasons why we won't grow next year. I mean, to grow you need FDI, foreign direct investment, because Turkey doesn't produce its own technology. And Turkey doesn't have enough savings to finance growth. So we need other people's money to grow. But that money is not coming in, simply because there is this constant fear that Mr. Erdogan or the administration will confiscate factories or will change the rules of the game so that a company that invests into Turkey with expectations of a reasonable rate of profit, will actually end up losing money. And furthermore, most of our foreign direct investment comes from Western countries. And at this point, we have so many conflicts with the United States and EU. I think uh, multinationals that are uh, domiciled in those countries would be extremely reluctant to invest into Turkey. And finally, I mean, look, we are the banks have run out of room to make new loans even though the official non-performing loan that's bad loan to total loan ratio is four percent even the economies are mr lutvi elvan admitted that up to 550 billion liras of loans that's roughly one sixth of the loans in the system are impaired that is risky with uh, less than 100% chance of being repaid. And of course, banks know this too well. And they are very reluctant to spend their precious remaining capital on new loans. So if you have no loan growth, obviously companies can't invest or don't have enough working capital to increase their production levels. And finally, of course, the unemployment come COVID-19 issue. According to latest data, uh, pe- people have different calculations, but I'm, I'm taking the lowest. Uh, the broad-based measure of unemployment is 22.6%. So roughly one out of every Turkish worker has lost her job. And these jobs are not coming back for two reasons. First, I'm watching Dr. Fauci and Uğur Şahin, the Turkish gentleman who is a German citizen and who is the co-inventor of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine with his wife, uh, Dr. Özlem Türeci. He says, you know, we won't reach herd immunity before the last quarter of the year, even if effective, even if vaccines are fully effective and the vaccination campaign is efficient. In Turkey, well... Okay, so let's say we are no worse than other emerging nations. <coughs> that means Turkey will have to resort to partial or full lockdowns for at least six more months, which means service sector jobs will not come back, which means these people who are temporarily unemployed will not be able to consume. And if you don't consume, then you know companies don't produce and the economy slows down. The second problem is, and this is true everywhere in the world, COVID-19 has accelerated technological change and and the change and the way we act. 
I don't think business travel will return because Zoom or Microsoft Teams is much easier to arrange. I don't think we'll be going to shops as much as we used to. You know, e-commerce seems to do the job. There are a lot of things like that which will not return and it will cause certain industries to consolidate, that's to shrink. These are most likely to be in uh, brick and mortar retail, uh, in tourism, you know, entertainment, hotel business, and civil aviation. And Turkey is heavily reliant on tourism, including the upstate, the, the up uh, stream industries, roughly 10% of our national income comes from tourism, which won't come back. Another 20-30% come from sidewalk cafes, kiosks, people who sell, you know, Turkish sausages or, or uh, chestnuts on the street. And they too have lost their livelihood. It would be extremely difficult for them to come back because they are so far behind. They can't even take loans. This is why uh, we think uh, Turkey will not grow more than 2% in 2021. If you ask my opinion, and it's speculative, until we have a new administration or Mr. Erdogan change course uh, and invites IMF to solve Turkey's chronic funding problem, chronic financing problem, and bring some semblance of order to the way Turkey is being politically managed, Turkey will remain in a secular stagnation. That's a long-term stagnation with years of low growth, wasted potential, and very high inflation. How Would I change my mind? Yes, I mean, miraculously, if everybody in Turkey is vaccinated by March, if Turkey cuts a deal with IMF, or if Mr. Erdogan resolves his differences with Mr. Biden and Brussels, then, of course, I will be more optimistic. Or maybe the aliens will come and lend us $100 billion. Hey, it's a quantum world. Everything happens. In the meantime, please stay home and stay healthy. And once again, I wish to my entire audience season's greetings. This is Attila Eshilada saying goodbye from Istanbul.